I'm coming right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be right there. Jason, catch! for the office. Good. Because I kind of wanted to talk to you alone. Okay. Okay. Um, so when, um, when you asked me to go to the carnival, I know that Spinelli and Maxley probably you to do it, so I, we don't have to. Do you to. Want to go to the carnival? Do you? I know you hate social occasions, and I just can't see you having fun at a carnival, and not to mention that you are recovering from two gunshot wounds. It's just a really good reason for us not to go. But it is Michael's charity. Okay, I'm ready to check. Then you don't want to go? You wouldn't even be asking me to go if it weren't for Spinelli and Maxi totally forcing you into it, right? Hi. Okay, so you're officially, officially off the hook. Spinelli brought in a new client today. I have to work, and you do not have to take me to the carnival. Are you sure no, you want no, no. Listen, this case gives us both the perfect out, so you are under no obligation at all. New case in emergency? Sort of. Yeah, I mean, sure, the agency does need business. I have to work. I just wanted to come and let you know that you are officially off the hook. But I'd, I'd like to go. Then go. Have fun. No. No, I want to go with you. I, I understand that you have to work. Sorry. I know that drives you crazy. I won't do that again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was Michael. for? Breaking and entering. Of what? Are you giving me attitude? No, sir. Uh-uh. Breaking was reported at the stand a few minutes ago. Doors wide open, clearly close for business, and here you guys are. Yeah, but look, we just, we pulled out right now. Why don't you show me your ID and I'll see if we can get you back on your way. Absolutely, no problem. I just, I, I want to warn you that before I go for my wallet, I have a licensed gun in my waistband, so I can... I can Hand away from the gun! Both of you! Against the wall. Hands on your heads! Now! Okay, sir. We do not have time for this. We didn't do anything wrong. He can't hold us. And I warned him about my gun. That was polite, wasn't it? Yeah, actually. It was weird. Yeah. Just... 
Wayne's name. Jason Morgan and Sam McCall. Thought those names sounded familiar. A real live gangster and his girlfriend. Your arrest records are so long they froze the computer. Dispatcher had to call IT. In the meantime, looks like I caught myself a real live Bonnie and Clyde. Can't be right, sir. Check it again. There's got to be an outstanding warrant somewhere. I appreciate that you're trying to do your job, but we didn't do anything wrong. That remains to be seen, ma'am. What about the detective squad? I'll check it again. Excuse me? I'm sorry, but how much longer is this going to take? As long as it takes, ma'am. Oh, no, I'm not going to sit here much longer. Oh, okay. come. Calm down. It's not going to do us any good if, if we have the cops chasing us. Does this look familiar? No, sir. running our names over and over as if something's going to come up. Michael and Christine are probably halfway to Mexico by now. What do you think they're going to do when they get there? I don't know. I mean, Michael knows a little Spanish. He thinks he can drive a boat. Oh, Maybe they're looking right. for a town along the coast. Has, has Christine ever had a job? <laughs> Volunteer work. She studies all the time. That's it. What, does she speak Spanish? <laughs> Funny. French. Come on, she's Alexis's daughter. Uh, okay. Does she ever travel alone? Uh, Alexis's daughter. Hey, what about Sonny? Can't you call in a favor and have these guys go down and look for them? Well, we, we thought about that, but uh, it's just so hard to know who to trust, and Michael and Christina would be valuable hostages, so I decided not to even take that risk. Couldn't even get a traffic ticket on either one of you. I'm sorry. Looks like I'm gonna have to let you go. You'll have better luck next time. Don't worry. Just how to get out of his head and stop thinking and how to start living again. <laughs> okay, I see. What you're trying to say is that you couldn't tell him that you used to like to ride your motorcycle to, to the edge of the cliff and you'd stop right before you went off. Or about your train surfing. Single bridges. I couldn't stand it if Michael got hurt doing something crazy just because that's what I did. Still do. Still do. Don't tell him what. That you like to live dangerously because it makes you feel alive. There's nothing wrong with that. What about you? You're the same way. Right side of things, we don't have to go to the carnival because I really do have to work. Okay. You want some help? Want to help me work a case? You don't believe me? No. I, of course, I believe you. I. Perfect. I actually like the idea of giving you orders. Okay. The client, Drake Black. He engaged McCall and Jackal to do surveillance on his business partner, Deidre Evans. He thinks that maybe she could be in a little bit of trouble. At least this isn't a cheating spells case or anything like that because that's so overboard. What, what, kind, of, what kind of trouble? Um, 
Well, there are unexplained phone calls, absences that are unexplained. Could be that she's being blackmailed or giving away top secret information, you know, stuff like stuff like that. But he's given me all of her credit card information and, and, and stuff. So if anything comes up, we are definitely gonna... Oops. Time is everything. Whew. Okay. All right, this is good. There's been a new charge. She just booked a room at the Metro Court. Now we just wait. Yep, we just wait. Well, you better like your own company when you're doing PI work because you do spend a lot of time with yourself. And it's really not good to sort of slack off or not off because you might miss something really, really important. But you would know that because you've done a lot of surveillance. Well, as a PI, maybe you can teach me something now. Deirdre just picked up a negligee downstairs in the boutique. Oh, Jason, this is gonna turn out to be another cheating spouse case after all. A woman does not rent a room and buy a negligee to pass along the company secret. She is definitely meeting a yeah, lover. Why, okay, why keep it a secret from her business partner? According to Spirit's file, Deidre is, is not married, so she's got nothing to hide. No, but what if she's meeting a married man? Or woman. I'm, I'm just saying, I leave all moral judgments to the client. Me, I'm just gathering my facts. Okay. <laughs> See the elevator button. Get out, or I'll call hotel security. Excuse me? You're sizing up which room to break into. That's how they do it, you know. I saw a documentary on cable. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I guess that's how it looks, though. <laughs> oh, Frank. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is this is my fiance Frank, and we are getting married, and we're just we're looking for a place to have our wedding. Do you think the Metro overcharges? Because I think it's pretty great here. I was kind of thinking this could be perfect, or maybe we could go to the Cosmopolitan, but I don't know, it's not as elegant over there, and I was just thinking, you know what, we can't afford it. Don't skimp on your wedding. Do it once, do it right, and make it last a lifetime. Sorry about the mix-up, and good luck to you both. Thank you. Frank? Maybe the client forgot her pajamas. Is that possible? No, it's not possible. When you forget your pajamas, you wear a t-shirt. You don't go to the boutique and spend twelve hundred dollars on a peignoir set. Uh, I mean, what? Peignoir. It, oh, I forget it. Just trust me, okay? Thank you. 